incubating, hibernating, gestating, or, in the words of Tacita Dean, sluggardizing. These are all things that are absolutely essential to the creative process, yet we often lose the magic and value of them when we pathologize them as being bad, we blame ourselves for being lazy, we tell, tell stories about how we're blocked, when actually we might just be in a necessary place of rest and percolation where things are settling and forming and evolving inside, ready to bloom at a later point. So it's a really fine line between being able to discern when this is a kind of toxic uh, inertia pattern where you're just like in bed all the time or you're, you're not doing the thing, you're not nourishing yourself, you're in a place of creative anorexia where you're not nourishing yourself by making the work or whether you're in a state of being authentically and wonderfully sluggardizing and I love the word sluggardizing and I've used it since I heard Tacita say it in I think it was 2018 or 19 and I'm here in my slug garms which is this beautiful warm inner wounded child symbolizing duvet that I like to wrap myself up in to talk about these sort of more difficult things and in addition to this I wanted to talk about the polyvagal theory. So polyvagal theory is, I uh, think, I can't remember who thought of it, I think it might have been Stephen Poggs and Peter Levine type people, I think it might have been Peter Levine type people, uh, I'll put the links in below and this is just an example of me authentically channeling and not over researching because that's what Heart School is about and I will refer you to the correct links below. But Deb Dana is a person who talks about polyvagal th theory in a very accessible way in terms of practices and what you can do on the ground, as is Peter Levine. But anyway, there's a state in of our nervous system called the dorsal vagal state. And I wanted to just mention it in relation to being in rest, being in block, being in a kind of inertia or stultified in relation to your expression and being in the world and our bodies can do this as a nervous system response um, it's basically the freeze response it's shut down um, there's fight flight and threes well this is the freeze response where you just kind of immobilized and unable to really act or use the will use the action find that fire in the belly the solar plexus follow the heart's calling all of that's kind of off limits because nervous system wise you're in a state of relaxation well when i say relaxation i mean it's the opposite of being like activated and and driven so it's not relaxation but it's a form of um depression really and it relates closely to depression as well so in relation to the incubation that we need for creativity it's important for people to be able to discern um, whether they're in a pattern that actually would be really good and useful and helpful to find the fire in the belly, get out of bed or get out of the bedroom or wherever like wherever you, you vegetate or sluggardize. Um, and it might not even be it might it might be that you're like visually visually it might be that you're absolutely like prolific and doing and busy in other parts but there are creative things on the back burner as well and if this is the case uh, it might be that you are frazzled and unable to do the things that you really want to do and nourish yourself with the creative work because you are just so distracted and fraught with with bu being busy in other ways this is so common um, and that's because most of us who are doing creative work aren't really remunerated for it, remunerated, remunerated, paid for it. So we have to do other work in the world to fund it. It's a sad fact of life. It's about supply and demand and value. And ultimately, the society doesn't value creative expression because it is so abundant and 
so many people are doing it and the market is saturated. So, lots of things there. Um, the duvet, the presence of the duvet hopefully will employ you to hold yourself compassionately as you navigate whether something is creative block or whether it's simply mm, incubation, necessary incubation. Um, there aren't necessarily solutions to this. It's quite difficult to say either way, like, do these things. And there's lots of YouTube videos that will tell you how to do these things to figure it out. But ultimately, you will know in yourself when something is ready and when you are resisting and sort of avoiding the life force and the magic that wants to come through. On another note, in terms of, I've mentioned the nervous system, sometimes it simply doesn't feel safe to be in a, a body, an embodied sort of flow state. And for a lot of people, this can show up in maybe you're a singer and you can't, you physically can't sing, you can't access your voice. It might be a dancer or a mover and there's some trauma that's stopping you from being able to move your body. Um, it's quite often, I certainly, with breath work, which I like to call, which I like to not call breath work, I like to call it breath play, because work's not, not a fun word. But there's times when I have tried and attempted to do breath work, breath play, and that's, maybe it's because I'm calling it breath work that it doesn't and uh, get me. No, really it's because when I start that process and I get into the chest and into the body it feels a bit scary and I get kind of well oh Joel get out of that it's, it's too much um and that's certainly easing as I ease into it um but sometimes I'll have a powerful experience might be dancing or singing or performing or even writing can be like can feel unsafe because it's like like if I start there's just this like energy that really awakens and this like that life force that flow state just whew, it just oozes through and it's quite um it's quite something to carry it's quite something to channel it um so sometimes bear that in mind when you know you're not able to access that um and be in that expressive creatrix creative energy mode it might be that there's just some some easing into it that needs to happen some dropping into the body um rather than trying to beat yourself up because you haven't done the thing that you said you were going to do and you set a goal to write this novel in 2023 and you haven't even written a word and it's april that's <laughs> that's me that's my gremlin there having a go at me for not editing Paris Syndrome and being prolific and doing that but Paris Syndrome for if anyone wants to know is the novel that I'm working on and it's been on a back burner and I have many many creative projects often all at once some of which are on a back burner and I've had to try really hard um, to just get one and to do it to completion and what can happen also when you're trying to do too many things at once and spin too many plates is that's where the dormancy and the inertia and the dorsal state in relation to the creative projects kicks in because there's overwhelm and then it's like where do I even start um so this can be something that also is important to discern from the necessary incubation and on that note I'll end on the note of if it is just incubation and you're exactly where you need to be. I mean, we're always all exactly where we need to be. <sighs> Truly. Hmm. And this video perhaps helped you just sit with where you're at and how that feels 
and whether there are things to be released in terms of goals or expectations or patterns and desires, grandiose visions, whether there are adjustments to be made to enable you to create your work or whether there are simply judgment judgments to be dispensed with as you surrender into precious incubation, hibernation, gestation, sluggardizing, whether that results in eventual germination and flourishing of expressive outlets or not, is not the point. Because allowing any of those situations to be, being with yourself exactly as you are, dropping in, feeling into what wants to come through, regardless of what the mind thought of last year or the year before. <sighs> That's the key to be okay. If you found any of this content helpful, please like, subscribe, comment, comment below anyway how you sluggardize if you do. Um, and how you feel in relationship to that and see the links below to explore Heart School's offerings, videos, community circles and check-ins and one-to-one coaching services with sluggy love. <laughs>